Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning worship at St. Paul's Episcopal Church on this third Sunday of Advent. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the third Sunday of Advent and we will light the candle of joy. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of peace we light it in the candle of hope again if we remember Jesus, born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and bring us everlasting peace and joy. Today we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with joy. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus gave great joy to his mother, so his presence in the world gave joy to those who had none before. He healed them and gave them hope and peace when they believed in him. From hope and peace grows joy. We light the candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy, and that through him there will be everlasting joy on earth. Joy is like light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the joy you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us, help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do, to do your will be sharing. Joy with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Pour forth in power, O Lord, and come. Assist us by the mighty power, so that that by your grace and merciful kindness we may swift, swiftly receive the salvation that our sins impede. Who, walk, who lives in the range with thee in the unity of Holy Spirit, Ever one God without world without end. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you all in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior draws near. Come, let us adore him. upon me because the Lord has anointed me he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and to release and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. 
Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with the garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Mary, Magnificat, Luke, first chapter, verses 46 through 55. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he's looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from John. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. <clears throat> then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who have sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ beside us, Christ with us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I love Second Sundays because I can take my jacket off and preach. Although still, as I probably say every week, miss having y'all out there. But, you know, on most days, what I like to say about this particular work that God has called me to, and I'm very blessed that I feel this way, is I have the best job in the world. I love to preach, love to teach, love to be with y'all. And you know, there's a lot of jobs I'm glad I don't have. And I'm so, so grateful for the people who do them. Like electricians. A couple of times I've tried doing electrical work, hanging lights. One time even putting a new cover on a fuse box. Every time it winds up with something unpleasant happening to me involving electricity. So no matter how small the job, I always call an electrician. Don't like getting shocked. I don't imagine any of you do either. And my plumber, yep. There was a time when I installed a sink on our, the upper floor of our house. And then a few months after that, as Patricia will attest, we noticed water stains on our downstairs ceiling. And yep, a lot of work later, we discovered that I forgot to do a couple of little tiny simple things that caused leaks that dripped all the way down from the third floor to the first floor. Lots of jobs. I'm glad I don't do. And I think the world is a better place because I don't do them. I'm so grateful for all of you. I'm grateful right now, especially for our first responders. I'm grateful for our doctors and our nurses and our respiratory therapists and everyone working out in hospitals right now anyone involved in, in, in the medical profession in any way, from people in the billing office to people, the receptionist at the front desk, to the x-ray technicians, physical therapists, all of you, grateful beyond measure for how you are putting yourself in harm's way to try to help us stay healthy and be healthy and survive this pandemic. Grateful that you are doing this job, and that you are all doing it with such integrity and such endurance and faith. 
You know, John tries, the people try to give John a job that he doesn't want. They try to give him a job that, that really he's not qualified for and that some think that he is. They keep asking him, aren't you the one? Aren't you the Messiah? Aren't you the prophet? Aren't you the one that's promised? And You know, and it's no wonder because John has attracted a huge following. He's very charismatic. He lives on the edges of society. He preaches truth to people and he offers them baptism by water. Excuse me at the time, a purification ritual. And so they, they, they suppose that he's Elijah. They suppose that he is the one that's, that's been promised, the Messiah. And John, and we miss this if we're not careful, this moment in the gospel is, is pivotal in the Jesus story. John, in three words, sets forth the heart of faith when he answers them asking if he's the chosen one by saying, I am not. John could have been yet another prophet saying that he's the Messiah. You know, even back then they had people that traveled around and made their living preaching and saying that they were the one and attracting followings. John could have taken their money. Happened back then too. Oldest story in the world. John could have set up some sort of rivalry with his cousin, Jesus. But John knows that he is not the one. And not only that, he knows that Jesus is the one. And through his own faith and his own knowledge of, his own vision of what is true, and his own humility, John is able to say, I am not. I'm not the chosen one. I'm not the Messiah. I'm not Jesus. You know, history is littered with wannabe messiahs. One of my guilty pleasures during this lockdown has been to watch documentaries about religious cults. And I'm, I'm now on my third or fourth one. Um, and all of those cults involve having a central figure, a charismatic figure, a preacher, sometimes even someone who sits on the fringes of society and maybe even some of them eat bugs and honey and, and dress in animal furs. And all of those folks at the head of those cults are confused about who they are and who God is. And because of their charisma, and their forceful personalities, and they're taking advantage of a vulnerable type of person. At some point, they wind up failing the test that John passes because they cannot say, I am not. They point to themselves. They point to their own teachings. They ask people to, to leave behind everything, not for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Jesus, but for the sake of what they are telling them to do. And it usually winds up being for their own pleasure and their own profit. They fail the test. They cannot say, I am not. So as we think on this Sunday about preparation for the coming Christ, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to see that, that our being able to know and remember each and every day that we are not God, we are not Jesus, we are not endowed with everything we need to save ourselves is central to our faith. We are not because He is, just like John says. We are not because one is coming uh, whom, whom we feel as if we are not worthy to bend down and tie His shoes. When we remember our place and we remember that we are not 
so much falls into place when we remember that we are not God and that we are in need of this Savior, Jesus. Just look around you in the world. Yes, we live in a world that is full of beauty and wonder and peaceful moments and abundance, but we also live in a world that is full of violence and hatred and lack. The abundant resources of this world, which were they distributed well, could feed and clothe every and, and, and house every single man, woman, and child living on this earth are concentrated in the hands of a very few. Even though we live within a place of relative wealth and richness and comfort. And sure, we've progressed in so many ways. I've heard many times over in the last few years that in spite of all the warfare that we see around us, we live in one of the most peaceful times in history. That there are fewer wars on this planet right now uh, than there were even 100, 200 years ago. Yet, there is still chaos in some parts of the world. We... We have virus-killing vaccines coming out soon. Yet we still live in a world full of disease. It doesn't take a long time to see that we live in the midst of brokenness. We live in the midst of sinfulness. We live in the midst of pain. We live in the midst of a world in need of a Savior in the midst of people who often do a terrible job of trying to run things on their own. So we prepare our hearts, we prepare our souls by remembering we are not. And He is What beauty we find when we embrace that He is. How how our hearts open up to the loving help of God and the loving kindness of God that is always on offer to us, always surrounding us. How the scales fall off of our eyes and we see with the eyes of our hearts that God's love surrounds us And that an adoring God pursues us when we remember that we are not. A loving God who became incarnate in an ordinary human being coming through the most ordinary ways to invade our lives on the most ordinary levels to provide us with extraordinary grace and love and wisdom and kindness and salvation. Yes, there are many jobs that we should never want. And being Savior of the world should always be one of the jobs that we know we cannot have. But thank God that a Savior is coming. And thank God that we are offered in Him a straight path to a better way. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, wherever we are, we are bold to sing. The prayers of the people. As witnesses to your light and truth, we come to you in prayer, O Lord. Infuse the heart of your church with your spirit and focus it on your mission. Renew your people and their leaders as they serve your purpose. Remind us continually whose we are. Turn the hearts and actions of all the world's leaders to justice and peace. We pray for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Brian, our governor, the Congress and courts of this land. Open our eyes to what is going on around us. Open our hearts to our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Move us to open our hands in love when they are in need and to stand up for them when they are oppressed. We pray for those suffering from natural disasters, from unjust economies, from hunger and want. We know people around us who are suffering from anxiety, scarcity, illness, and loneliness. Some of them we know and most are unknown to us we ask that you assure them of your presence and sustain them with your grace. We pray for those we know by name, Pat Allen, Louisa Anthony, Silva Britt, Jonathan Bruce, Ida Demons, Ivory Duhart, Vivian Fitzhugh, Vanita Ford, Kayla Hall, 
Melita Hibbert, Robert Jackson, Cleopatra Johnson, Leighton Johnson, Rose Marie Hutchinson Lockett, Carl Manson, Francis B. Martin, Christy Moffat, Vincent Murray, Ken Singleton, Bonnie Smith, Emery Stevens, James Ward, Mary Ware, Anne Washington, and Sarah Wood. Our hearts break when someone whom we love dies. Today we mourn for Devin Batiste, recently departed. May we be a comfort as we walk with his grieving loved ones. The Litany for St. Paul's Rector Search. Almighty God, look graciously on the people of St. Paul's. Be with us and lead us as we seek the next rector for our church. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for Father Tim's leadership as interim rector during this special time in the life of our church and ask that you continue to guide him as he leads us through this period of transition. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask your direction and guidance for all those who shall choose our next spiritual leader that we may receive an upright and faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for all our ministries. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us perception, faithfulness, and joy so that we may hear your voice in all of our deliberations. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us also the desire and the ability to truly hear each other and those who have entrusted us with this process. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us courage to respond and act as you lead us. Lord, hear our prayer. Come Holy Spirit, infuse us with the attributes of sound decision-making. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. I'm Tim Black, I'm the interim rector. And as you can see, yes, as you are experiencing now, yes, we are still worshiping via Zoom and Facebook, um, keeping ourselves and one another safe uh, during this time. But we are still the church. We are still gathered, even if we are online are physically distant from one another. Our hearts and our spirits are joined together this morning. For that, I'm just so, so grateful because the church is God's people and you are God's people. So together, we're the church. And if you're visiting God's church here this morning online, please email us at St. Paul's, <clears throat> excuse me, stpaulsatl.org, welcome at stpaulsatl.org right here. 
and let us know who you are and allow us the, the privilege of inviting you into life together here at St. Paul's. We have so much going on these next two weeks as we move closer and closer uh, to the Feast of Christ, to Christmas Day. We are continuing with noonday and evening prayer on Tuesday and Thursday at 12 and 6.30. We are having our Wednesday night Bible study starting at 7 p.m. This week we're talking about joy and we're still using the book Unwrapping the Names of Jesus. And if you have not joined us yet, please come on and join us, even if you can only join us for one week or two weeks. Every week stands alone, and every week ha has a different uh, lesson to, to be learned from it, and a different, different thing to, to open our hearts up to every week. So please join us. Next week on Sunday morning, we'll be having a virtual lessons and carols for our Sunday morning service. The service will be a little different. We're following the format of lessons and carols and reading some of the lessons central to Advent, and a couple for Christmas Day, too. And we're going to have lots of music, and we're going to have people from many different age groups in the church participating, so please tune in next Sunday morning. And then Christmas Eve, we will have our Christmas Eve service at 10 p.m. We will be watching it together on Zoom, just like we do on Sunday morning, and it will also be on Facebook Live. And then Christmas Day, we're adding a new service. There'll be a 10 a.m. service of morning prayer that I'm going to lead. I'm just going to lead it from my home at 10 a.m. And you're all invited to join us for that. There will be a bulletin for that service we'll be sending out. Um, so be looking for that in your email as well. And then, of course, on Sunday, uh, we will be celebrating the first Sunday of Christmas uh, with a worship service as usual. So thank you so much for being a part of us this morning. Know that we are privileged to be your home for worship today. So please uh, listen as I turn announcements over to the vestry. Good morning, St. Paul's. My name is Michael Blakely. I am your junior warden. We'd like to say happy birthday. Today is a birthday Sunday, so anyone who's uh, having a birthday here in December, happy birthday. On December 14, from 8.30 to 6 p.m., the county's new mobile voting unit will be here to kick off uh, early voting on December 14th. we also like to say we had a great turnout for communion last Sunday. We will be doing this again. I like to remind you that uh, we are still accepting pledges for 2021. Please uh, turn your pledges in. And all those who pledge in 2020, we'd like to thank you for your pledge. Thank you very much. We also like to say that St. Paul's own Rhett Solomon will be ordained to transitional diaconate on uh, December 19th at 2 p.m. We will be streaming this live, so uh, look for future bulletins with updates on this information, how you'll be able to stream and watch this uh, momentous occasion. And that's all we have today. Uh, again, if you're visiting for the first time, please come back. Thank you. Belinda McIntosh celebrated her 43rd birthday on December 5th. And Areba Dowell celebrated her 49th birthday, and Sharon Piero celebrated her 72nd birthday on December 9th. Blythe Blakely celebrated her 8th birthday, and Marilyn Adams celebrated her 18th birthday. December 10th, Rosalind Green celebrated her birthday. December 12th, Pa Dowell celebrated his 43rd birthday. Janice Russell celebrated her birthday. Javon Anderson celebrated her 78th birthday. December 14th, Adina Adams will celebrate her 22nd birthday, and Mitch Ramsey will celebrate his 75th birthday. December 15th, Tamaria Russell will celebrate her birthday, and Ramona Jones will celebrate her 68th birthday. December 17th, April Anderson will celebrate her 52nd birthday. December 19th, Gloria Ramsey Lake will celebrate her birthday. And the 21st, Sayla Wright will celebrate her 20th birthday. And on the 22nd, Janet Ivy Lawhorn will be three years old. 
Cleopatra Johnson will be 93 years old. And on the 25th, Christian Bodrick will celebrate his 14th birthday. Robert Byrd III will celebrate his 65th birthday. On the 28th, Teresa Stevens will celebrate her 70th birthday. And Ernest Ford will celebrate his 77th birthday, a.k.a. Ernie. And Sidney Singleton on the 29th will be 23 years old. And on the 30th, Michael Blakely Sr. will be 70. So I'd like to offer this blessing from the prayer book. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and a sacrifice for the whole world. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Lord find you alert to his coming and aware of his presence. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.